Hey, welcome back to another Just 15 Minutes. Um, okay, my name is David, if you didn't know. And does it matter? No, it doesn't. Um, but anyway, carrying on, what have I got? Well, I'm on my old Mac. And when I say old Mac, uh, this is a, an Intel-based Mac uh, from late 2014. And why am I showing you this? Um, that's a really good point, because I was going to give this away or recycle it or whatever and save up some pennies to get the the latest Mac Mini, um, the the shrunken version. Um, but I, I then stumbled across what I'm about to show you, uh, because the reason why I was going to give it away or recycle is that because it's, um, as you can see there, it's late 2014, okay? Um, the, you know, it it um, it only went up to I forgot the uh, the OS version, but um, it came a point where it was an older uh, Monterey, I think it was uh, Mac OS Monterey, whatever version that was, eleven, twelve, something like. That. Anyway, eleven, I think I can't remember. Ten, who knows? Uh, it was Monterey, I'm pretty sure. And it got to that point where you could not upgrade any further. Now. Generally speaking, that's not a major issue, but um, the problem was that a lot of applications started to complain that you needed a latest uh, OS to um, upgrade and things like that. So even everything from Microsoft Office to actually some of the browsers as well, uh, like Chrome and uh, Edge and a few things like that. And um, I also have some music software as well, and they were complaining that, oh, you can't upgrade because you need you know, the latest upgraded uh, Mac OS. So you might notice this looks a little bit different, but you can see my Mac Mini is definitely a late 2014, as you can see there. Um, but if you ever look down here, I've got Mac OS Sonoma, which isn't the latest latest, and I'll show you that in a second. It's um, uh, Sokoa, okay? And if I do that, just to prove what I'm talking about if I go to system settings. Okay, it's not the snappiest of machines because it's a dual core i5 Intel with um, uh, 16 gig, um, sorry, 8 gig of RAM. I do apologize. But if I have a look here on software update, you will see I've got the ability to update to the very latest Sokoa. Okay, now I'm not going to do this because there's a lot of extra bloat basically that I don't really need so I'm on the Mac OS just the one version behind but I probably will do this and just disable some of the features um, that I don't need like the iPhone mirroring and stuff like that um, but the point being is this is all working on my old Mac and I've got even an older Mac laptop um, a MacBook Pro that is a Core i7 16 gig of RAM uh, it's actually a really snappy machine now even though it's a Core i7, sure, it's an older um, series uh, chip, but it, it's still really powerful. But again, I just found I couldn't run anything. Um, it wouldn't let me upgrade. So I'm going to do the same um, to that. And I, it will work on iMacs as well. So this is a Mac Mini, MacBook, you know, Pros or laptops. Um, and I think it goes back. I can't remember the earliest Mac um, that you would be able to use this on but it does go back quite a bit so anyway where did all this magic come from you say well it all started when i stumbled across open core legacy patcher okay i'll put the links in the uh, the uh, video description below and you can get started um it will go through what you need to do and the instructions are really quite good even for a a, a mac novice like myself OK, and what you will need is a USB stick, OK, a USB data storage stick. Um, I did try a 16 gig because I saw that some of these Mac OSs were about 15 point something. But I didn't realize that there's some additional files that get um, that get downloaded as well. And it bumps it just over what I had. So given the fact that fortunately those USB sticks are really, uh, really cheap. Uh, at the moment, anyway, um, they um, I think it cost uh, for a 64. Gig. Yeah, the 64 gig USB. I think it was something like about 10 or 12 dollars US. So 
um, really not a problem at all. OK, so essentially, if you go through this, it will guide you to obviously, first of all, download the open core patcher and I'll show you what that looks like. OK, it's a um, it's a Mac application. Let's just run into their open core patcher. OK, and this it, it's a really good interface, actually. Um, it takes a, a few seconds to come up because it's checking things. But basically, this goes through um you can build and install open core onto your usb drive so that's where you need like say a, a 32 gig um usb stick will be fine uh, but 16 gig wasn't quite enough okay so and uh, also what it'll do is allow you to say what mac os that you want so i've already got um i think ventura and Sonoma, but if you ever look, if you go to the download there, okay, it's got um, a list of the versions that you can download. So you can literally pick from the OS that you want. Now it doesn't have Sokoa because, uh, although I think if you did an upgrade uh, to this, it probably will uh, find Sokoa now uh, because it's obviously been out for a, a, a little bit longer but let's just let that go through and find what's available okay and you can see um here's a list of the um i think it was monterey that i had that i managed to get updated to uh but you can see it's now got actually uh Sokoa, which it didn't have when i installed um my version i had obviously sonoma okay which i'm fine with at the moment because it it still means i can update the applications you know it's a later uh, os but you could go really for the latest version okay so once you go through this it'll create that on uh, the os installer on the uh, the the usb uh, data disk uh, data disk goodness me uh, you get the idea the usb disk and um, if you follow through the instructions uh, what it then does is when you reboot you have to hold down the i think it's the command or the alt key it'll tell you anyway excuse me and uh, and it lets you boot from this special partition um like an efi boot i think it's called and it essentially then allows you to install that whichever version of the mac os that you've selected okay so which is pretty incredible now i did that with sonoma and when i rebooted after it installed um to be honest the 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 background was all sort of white and the the mouse was really sluggish and all sorts of different things um and it was it was a little bit um you know, I thought, oh, maybe it doesn't work. And I was I was ready to go and uh, uninstall it and go back to, uh, you know, the, the old version of the OS until I then read the instructions, <laughs> which is always good, isn't it? Um, and I forgot to do the post install root patch. Now, what that does, it makes sure that all the right drivers and things have been uh, installed for your version of the Mac OS and, and importantly, your hardware version and what will be uh, important when you do um, build this uh, install open core and it's really straightforward by the way um, like say a novice Mac user like myself can still do this but what will be um, useful is this model here like mine is a Mac mini 7 comma 1 okay you can actually find that in um, I think it's under system information as well uh, where you've got hardware there it's got model identifier okay mac mini 7.1 okay so that will be important because when you then install these extra drivers it will say what you know what version what model is it for okay but once i did the post install root patch that was it i can honestly say that everything everything runs as it did before there's no sluggishness there's no um obvious um you know issues with hardware or anything like that and this is my 2014 intel mac mini okay so i can run ableton live i can run microsoft office i can upgrade to the latest versions of those uh, software and um away we go so i think this is worth a try don't throw those old macs away yet
Um, so hopefully that has helped. And um, if it has, please like and subscribe, of course, and uh, we will catch you on the next one.